Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, it's St. Patrick's Day, and what this means for many, many people is that it's time to get drunk. <laughs> That's right. Alcohol sales are generally up over 150% on St. Patty's Day, and over 30% of men admit that they binge drink on this day. As a result, you know, March 17th has actually become one of the deadliest days of the entire year. And the reason why is because of the fatal accidents caused by drunk drivers. You know, according to the stats, the number of car accidents involving alcohol, it doubles on St. Patrick's Day. Drunk driving is involved in nearly 40% of all fatal car accidents on this day. And, and back in 2019, drunk driving on St. Patty's Day was the reason for more than 10,000 deaths here in the U.S., not only included fatal car collisions, but also uh, fatal pedestrian crashes. Sadly, you know, all of these tragedies are done in the name of a saint who wasn't Irish, he wasn't a snake herder, and he wasn't an alcoholic. You know, St. Patrick was actually born in Bonavon, which was between the Scottish towns of Dumbarton and Glasgow. And, and, uh, and he was actually brought to Ireland initially as a slave. Yeah, that's right. He was brought as a slave after being captured by Gaelic pirates uh, who took him from his home. And it was during his days there in slavery when Patrick actually embraced the Christian faith of his parents. Uh, he then eventually escaped from his captors and he returned to his home and, and it was there where he became a cleric. And, 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 you know, the Lord then eventually led him to return to Ireland, interestingly enough. Uh, and, and uh, you know, according to Patrick, you know, the, the Lord gave him a vision of, of people from Ireland speaking to him with one, a single voice, declaring, we appeal to you, holy servant boy, come and walk among us. Well, uh, St. Patrick embraced this vision that he believed was from the Lord. And it was then when he brought the Christian faith to the people there in Ireland. And, and, and at that point in time, uh, you know, the, the people there in Ireland were worshiping a pantheon of pagan gods. Uh, but then uh, P Patrick, you know, actually introduced them to the true and living Lord. Uh, in this way, St. Patrick drove the spiritual snakes out of Ireland as he preached the gospel of grace. And as a result of his incredible influence, you know, the people of, uh, of Ireland eventually decided to celebrate St. Patrick on the anniversary of his death. Now, this celebration initially allowed them to put aside their Lenten restrictions. And, and yet the holiday eventually degraded into a day of debauchery as, you know, people now feel the freedom to go out and engage in excessive drinking, all in the name of a saint who would no doubt disapprove. Now, if you truly want to honor the memory of this Christian missionary named Patrick, well, then the best thing that we can do is to live a life that's committed to the great commission of Christ Jesus, because, you know, that's how he committed his life. He, he was committed as a missionary to the great commission of Jesus Christ, and so we would do well to follow his example. Uh, and I want to remind you that St. Patrick was a man who sought the salvation of those who had enslaved him. What a great example. In this way, he not only demonstrated a heart of forgiveness for those who had enslaved him, but he also demonstrated a desire to see his captors come to faith in Jesus Christ. Furthermore, St. Patrick also presents us with a perfect picture of self-sacrifice. Think about it for a moment. You know, this servant of our Savior was ready to risk being enslaved all over again by returning to this region where he had been enslaved before. And in this way, we can see how St. Patrick was willing to suffer slavery so that he could help the pagan people of Ireland to receive the grace of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, this reminds me of the way that Paul was willing to be arrested and imprisoned and persecuted all for the sake of the gospel message. I'll remind you, it's in Acts chapter 21. There we learn about the day when a prophet named Agabus, he took Paul's belt, bound it around his own hands and feet and said, thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Uh, in this way, you know, he was warning Paul by informing him that he was going to be arrested if he returned to Jerusalem. Well, you know, the, the average person would say, okay, well, I'll just avoid Jerusalem, right? But in, in response to this warning, Paul declares this. He says, I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. You know, Paul was a man who was willing to suffer and die so that he could accomplish his calling in Christ. And in similar fashion, you know, St. Patrick was also a believer who was willing to suffer enslavement 
so that he could accomplish his calling in Christ. And in light of these examples, you know, I encourage you to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, uh, but we ought to celebrate St. Patrick's Day uh, by just taking some time today to examine our own commitment to Christ Jesus. We we should consider the, the sobering question, am I willing to suffer so that I can lead others to the Lord? Am I ready to be rejected by those I'm trying to reach with the gospel of grace? Am I willing to be canceled as I accomplish the great commission of Christ? Or am I still just living for the lusts of the flesh as I go with the flow of this wicked world? I like the way that the apostle Peter addressed these questions. It's actually in 1 Peter chapter 4 where the apostle declares this. He says, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood, of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Christian, listen, rather than living our lives for the lust of the flesh, we we ought to be spending the rest of our lives following in the footsteps of our Savior, who, remember, was willing to suffer even the death of the cross so that sinners like us might be saved. Therefore, rather than going with the flow of this fallen world, uh, let's be sober-minded saints who are ready to suffer for the sake of our Savior as we set out to accomplish his great commission. I like the way that Paul put it in Ephesians chapter 5 there. He declares, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here in these verses, we find Paul presenting us with the will of the Lord. This is the will of God for our lives. And according to the will of the Lord, Christians should stop being led by the spirits of alcohol. And instead, we should stay sober-minded so that we can be led by the Holy Spirit. In this way, we'll become those believers who are able to accomplish the great commission of Christ Jesus. And with this as the goal, I encourage you, let's follow in the footsteps of St. Patrick, by spending this day preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And as we do, the Lord will empower us and help us to continue fighting the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.